Garrett, how would you assess today's performance? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, had a good time out there, and um, yeah, did pretty much everything we wanted to do. So, what made it more appealing for you to pitch in the afternoon against some of your own teammates and organizational guys than facing an opponent at night? Yeah, that was just what we had on the schedule, and um, and gives us you know a little opportunity to maybe. Uh, Force feed a couple different pitches. We threw a, a, a few a few extra changeups today, really trying to get a good feel for that. And um, but you know, just a little bit of a download, and uh, just, like I said, just part of the part of the schedule. Ben Wortvet caught your last 13 starts last season, so he obviously knows you very well. And he put some tough at bats yeah. on you today, including four foul balls the first time you faced him. What does that say about how well he knows your pitches? Yeah, he. Uh, He's definitely uh, definitely knows how they move and, and where we like to throw them and why we like to throw them in certain places. Um, he, he, he put a tough t a bat together and wasn't able to execute a backdoor cutter. I mean, I, mean, I got it close, but I, I didn't get it to the strike zone. Um, but that was, that was a good thought. Uh, and then the second at bat, he, he, he went up above the zone and got a, a, got, hit a nice little base hit to left field, which was good. So... Um, Competitive at bats throughout. Yeah, he looked pretty good. It was a, it was a, it was fun. And with three weeks left before opening day, what's left on your checklist? Uh, I believe three more starts. So yeah, take it day by day. Still at this point, and just hammer out the recovery. Um, but for the most part, everything is. It's, it's certainly moving the way we wanted to, and for the most part, it's located the way we wanted to. So we just keep on building up. You know pretty much what you need to do during spring training to get ready for opening day, but you've always seemed to be a guy that's invested in a lot of the other pitchers on the rotation too. You watch them work. You know, you have ideas about pitching. Is that part of what you think is not your job, but something that you think is important for your kind of role on the team? Yeah, I mean, there's probably a, a role aspect to it. Um, I mean, I would say, like, it's partially – uh, you know, part of the job too. I mean, we 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 win collectively as a team, and we can't pitch. Each one of us can't pitch every single day, um, but we can be out there to support our teammates. So that's that's the type of culture that we're trying to foster. We also have new faces, so we want to make sure that you know everybody's comfortable talking and approaching to anybody, um, approaching anybody on 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 any subject. Um, also, you know, you got to get your sea legs under you too. You know, you go from not watching very many games to all of a sudden watching nine innings every single day. You know, there's a, there's a bit of a, you got to get in shape. You got to get a little bit of shape to do that, to be honest. So, um, there's, there's, there's a few thoughts behind it. I mean, everybody points to you and deservedly so for you know you're coming off a Cy Young year, but you mentioned winning collectively. I mean, so that's something that you have to try to do beyond your day of work, I guess. Right. To try to get that going. Right. I mean, every player should ask themselves. Um, by the time the game goes on, like what can I do to positively affect the outcome today, whether you're in the game or not? Um, starters, like you know, it can be uh, it can really be as simple as walking down through the dugout when a guy's had a couple tough at bats and just looking him in the eye and tapping him on the shoulder. Like you never know how far that can go and. Um, but you have to be paying attention to know that those are two tough at bats. You, you, you have to be paying attention, know where your teammates are, and have a rapport with your teammate in order for something like that to be effective. So, you know, there's a lot. Of, it's a small little thing, and it may not even have a word, but there's 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 a lot that goes behind that. So, if you're just bringing that mentality out every day, then hopefully we're better for it. You know what it's like to face, and, uh, you know what it's like to face Juan Soto. The idea of facing them both back to back. The first inning, let's say, how taxing is that on a pitcher? Yeah, I mean, it's about as taxing as I don't. I can't really think of anything more taxing than that. I mean, the Dodgers are going to throw out probably something similarly close, and outside of that, it's probably the most taxing first inning in the world. How much, how much does that take out of a guy, though? Uh, you know, for the next, for the fourth inning, the fifth inning, the sixth inning? I mean, it's hard to say. Yeah. he could come out really good. It's so you know he could come out really good. Uh, he could come out really bad. So uh, hard for me to answer that. Gary, what, have, what have you learned about Juan Soto in your time with him so far that maybe you didn't know about him before, or maybe that you appreciated more now that you've been around him a little bit more closely? I think I just kind of uh, just got to know him 
better. And his uh, his 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 work ethic and how he goes about it. You know, you you see a guy perform on the field, um, and then you see him behind the scenes. So it's always it's always fascinating to get to know how each player, you know, is in both of those situations and how some of the positive characteristics that he has on the field correlate to how he is in the clubhouse and vice versa.